You're very tall, Molly. <laughs> this is a DRT Clash 9 Low. Division Rebel Tackle. It's a company out of Japan. They have a division here in the United States. This is an amazing bait. It's a beautiful jointed glide. Nine inches long. I believe this one is floating. Does not have the lip or the tail in it, and that's fine because we're going to be painting this today. We're going to transform this pattern into a beautiful dark brown trout from our customer. Now, the cool one of the cool things. There's a lot of cool things about this bait. Uh, the price point, I would say, is competitive for what you get out of this bait. There's a number of different ways you can swim it. The lip is removable, and you can get like a wake or. A, any, there's a number of things you can do with it. I'm not going to digress because this is all about painting, not about swimmability. You guys can watch a number of videos on YouTube. I can link those. Runs anywhere for brand new. I've seen them between 89 and 95. I've seen discontinued patterns and types of these as high as 450 bucks on eBay. Um, and the 200 price point range is where you normally get them. So this is not an inexpensive bait. It's beautiful, it's well put together, well designed, swims like a monster, and we're going to make it into a brown trout today. So let's paint something cool. Now right off the bat, there's a couple of things that I want to do here. The first thing that we want to do is we want to mask the eyes. These eyes are well put in, so we are not going to be trying to pull them out like we would on cheap baits, because this is not an inexpensive bait. So not that I'm giving more care to this because it's expensive, but generally you'll find that when the price point goes up, it's not for no reason at all. Um, it's because the bait is very well put together. But we are going to go ahead and take our X-Acto knives and make a small incision into this tape because we want to keep the integrity of the eyes intact. We're not going to mess that up. So we're not going to spray over them. I really actually like these eyes. They're very natural looking. They're realistic. And it will not harm the pattern that I'm doing at all. In fact, it's probably spot on for a brown trout. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to give it a once over with a dry towel. If there's any oils or anything that have been transferred over from my skin or my customer's skin, I just want to make sure this is, we're not going to scuff this. There's no need. Opaque white is loaded in and let's get this primer on. You notice that I'm not giving it much primer around where its logo is. And I am going to leave that transparent. We're going to do a little bit to cover it. I'm not going to tape it because it'll look silly by the time we're done, but I am going to leave it a little bit less opaque and more transparent. I'm giving this white just a few minutes to air dry. While we do that, let's go through our color spectrum today, what, what we're going to be using on this bait. So we've already given it the opaque white base as a primer. It's just, I haven't mixed anything. This is just the opaque white from Createx. It shoots fine at around 35 to 40 PSI. And again, it's meant for base. And that's what, that's pretty much all I use it for. And a little bit of detail here and there, but it does have a tendency to splatter. So um, if you know what it's good for, then use it what it's good for and you won't have as many problems. I also have some pearlized white, also Createx color, pearlized copper some fluorescent red, 
sunset red 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 transparent now the fluorescents are moderately transparent as are the pearls a little bit more heavy on these than the fluorescent transparent is transparent the jacquard red and the createx sunset red are both transparent this is a sunrise yellow also a transparent color the wicked burnt sienna these are detail colors the next four which is primarily what we're going to be using them for although i am going to lay in a pretty heavy coat of detail burnt sienna to start out with because my client wanted a dark dark brown trout so i'm going to show you the pictures that i went through to try and get the selection for what i wanted to use as a reference photo today and i settled on this one only because she looks so gosh darn happy catching that fish and it's a beautiful fish it's a beautiful brown trout so we're gonna go with this one but the runners up were this one and that one make sure i've got all of that stuff off out of my chamber i'm going to do just a touch of yellow in with this fluorescent red this is that sunrise yellow about three or four drops And then I'm going to load this fluorescent red right on top of it. A good bit heavier. And what's going to happen is I'm going to cut in the bottom on both sides real quick. Just give it that. And then here comes that. You can see it blending right there in the chamber. Here comes that fluorescent via, uh, red behind it. We just want to get this set up and I might do a little bit more yellow underneath of it that through I'm just going to add a couple more drops of yellow on this side get that belly just get that blend in there it might seem like I'm working backwards but I promise you I'm not what I'm doing on this one only because the blend has to be really good is I'm taking what I had and now I'm running some pearl white just to mute the color a little bit to give it a little bit of shine and sheen and also to blend pearl white is a really good blending color now as we move through then we kind of switch back to our dark this is where we're going to be adding this burnt sienna. And I'm going to be shooting away from the bait. We come back and do the top. I'm going to add just a couple drops of sunset orange, sunset red. It, it's orange, but it, they call it sunset red. On top of that, some of this burnt orange, which is not orange, it's brown but it's got an orange base to it. Generally, if something has a red or a yellow base, it's considered a warmer color. And we're gonna spray from the top down on this and then come through the sides. We're gonna hit, do some modeling in here 
We've got a beautiful, beautiful tone going on. Really digging it. Now we're going to come and do the top here. Just a little bit of tone around the eyes and around this tail and around where the dorsal fin would be with some detailed black magenta just to really give it that sense of depth here here and do the eyes do the eyes now to the dark brown that I had in there I've loaded a little bit of white. I want to bring my pressure down just a little bit because around the gill plates there's a significant amount of white in this brown trout. So I'm coming shooting from an angle towards the nose to kind of cut down on the splattering of this. I also want to continue that down here and then we're going to come back with some yellow we want to kind of eliminate some of this overspray and we'll start by laying down some of this yellow just kind of outlining where we went over with white coming back on that doing the same We're going to come back in with this burnt sienna, add just a couple of drops in. I'm done with fluorescent red. That's pretty much just a base starting line. And I'm just going around outlining the yellow. But what you'll notice is this um, this burnt sienna brings back out that red and orange tone. In this photograph, really dark, dark, dark color dots and even it's not white behind the red and the black dots but if you kind of get up on that that looks like an olive green to me so there's going to be some hints of olive green in this as well so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay a stencil down in a white prime with some basic dots and then I'm going to come back over that and start detailing in with olive green and then we're going to put some red almost looks like a cranberry color so some some darker reds and cranberry is going to be the color of our spots on this we're starting out with a little bit of white in the chamber and with one I'm going to do one side at a time instead of doing flipping and doing color by color we're going to finish an entire side except for the detailing which I will do by hand so that's what we're getting ready to do at this point. I'm going to tape this down and we're going to come right back. Working one side at a time allows both hands to be free and it allows you to add a little bit more control as you're working on specific areas. And you notice I'm not giving this a whole lot of juice I'm more concentrated because this is going to end up being olive brown and I'm also working with the upper two-thirds of the body on this as well for a specific reason it's just not as prominent on the lower parts of the body now let's 
spray out this olive green. The last thing I'm going to do is just in a couple of spots, I'm going to add in a little bit of moss green just to darken a couple of the areas. Not over the entire bait, just in a couple of key places. Now that we have both sides on, we're going to finish the top here just a little bit. With this, I'm just going to lay down just a little bit of the olive green. And I'm just achieving that by moving the stencil around. Now we're set for the fine detailing. Now before we start building the actual detail in this, I'm coating this with a pearl white. Something that you're going to notice if you're playing along with the picture in the upper right hand corner of this shot here is that the pectoral fin is almost directly underneath the top of the dorsal fin. So that on this bait would be right about here. So instead of a lot of people will run this right up on the neck of the bait right at the gill plate. We're going to set this back quite a bit further on this. This is a hand cut stencil and it's it's fairly easy to cut out. Um, I will show in detail on another video how I cut out fen stencils. But this one is, is going to be fairly easy to do and the way I'm going to run this is I'm going to look at this bottom eyelet, this belly eyelet right here. And I'm going to run the beginning of this off of the back. So I'm angling and lining this up, the edge of this card, with the middle of my eyelet. So I'll get the same one on both sides. I'm going to fill this with just a little bit of, I think I want to use a black magenta and a moss green. And we're going to go super, super light because we don't want to just make this stand out too much. It wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. So if we line that up to the middle, this fin should be right there. Let's drop that card off. There's our fin. I just realized how many colors are in this. Now this is going to get a couple of coats. You guys are not going to see the entire process because most of you by now are clear coating. You know what it looks like. But the biggest trick is to stay away from this area completely and this tail area. You want to add enough clear coat on here to where it's going to coat evenly, but not be runny. And this will 
get hard and get tacky a little faster than the old stuff would and because it's going to hang straight down it's okay if you get a little clear coat there Just brush evenly and make sure you're working in good enough light to be able to see what you're doing. Make sure the back is completely covered. All the way down the sides. Take a good look at it. See if there's any touch-up areas you need to do. Run the brush down just one more time like that. And then we're going to work from here up so the nose will be the last area that we coat. And we'll just let the other side free hang can get a little bit in there. It's not going to hurt anything. And just work our way as we go up. Now remember we cannot, cannot, cannot dip this because of this needs to be the exact size to get that bill back in, whatever the client decides to do with that bill, or the lip rather, if you care to choose that word and then just make sure you run your brush down in even strokes and get the back and just run it all the way around and that's it folks I hope that I have been able to teach you a couple of things or maybe show you some color combinations. For this pattern, we did use a whole lot of colors on this, but we built our layers from light to dark pretty much. The only difference on this, the only variable, is that I did start after the white prime. I did start out with fluorescent red and then built around that. But you really can't see the fluorescent red in this because it's blunt, blended, blonded, yeah that's me, uh, because it's blended so well with the rest of the colors. And I hope you have an enjoyable rest of your day, evening, morning, whatever it is that you watch this video. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me on the channel. I always appreciate the company. It's always good to have you guys around. Love all my fish heads. And I will see you guys on the next video. Cheers! and happy casting from Jekyll Bates.